Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day today. Don't worry, I did trade with the Silk Touch Villager. His trades are locked in. I know a few people were worried about that yesterday. But today we are going to get started on actually building this trading hall because at long last it is finally time. And I figured if we're going to be curing a whole bunch of these zombie villagers and converting them into folks who we want to trade with inside of here we'd better have some place for them to go. I'm tired of making these temporary shelters for all of my villagers as I go along. I really want to have something permanent set up inside of here. And tempting as it is to put a whole lot of effort into the interior first so I can figure out where everything is going to go, I think I will probably have enough space in this massive oval that I've laid out. Let's take another quick look at that from the air so you can see this is the space where I'm planning to put all of the villagers. And uh, this is probably an oval, I think it's about 71 or maybe 60 65 blocks long, I forget. I went to plots.co.uk to plot this whole thing out, and it's going to be a large structure. I need to put down a few blocks just to get a feel for exactly what the structure is going to look like, because once again, I haven't really plotted anything out in creative quite yet. I kind of want to freestyle a little bit of this and then maybe work on a couple of bits here and there. One thing I do know is that right here I want to make a piston door because I want this place to be safe from pillager attacks and one of the main ways of doing that is to basically have some sort of door that will prevent access to the area inside and then to light the area inside up so that we don't get any mob spawns and hopefully pillagers aren't encouraged to spawn there as well. But I want to do some redstone stuff in the near future. I want to do a little bit of a little bit, bit of piston door mechanics and so around the outside I need to design something which is going to leave some room there for that to happen but first yeah I think I'm going to play a little bit with block palette I want to stick to some of the stuff that we've already used to build around here we use a lot of dark oak wood and spruce wood and stone and stone brick but I want this thing to stand out a fair amount so I think while we might have stone bricks as the accent as we do in the storage building I kind of want to make the walls out of some other stuff. Oh, <laughs> and the, the cartographer here was looking down at his table, but it almost made him look like he was sad at being left out. Don't worry, I am going to move him inside of there. He is one of my favorite new villagers, especially considering he trades me a unique banner pattern. That's super cool. So yeah, we're going to we're going to move some guys into here. But first of all, of course, we have to figure out how we're going to build the building in the first place. And the real life building I'm loosely modeling this after is Leeds Corn Exchange, which is a building I'm quite familiar with having gone to university around that area of Leeds in the UK and it's got a series of archways both on the inside and on the outside which kind of you know go around the perimeter of the building around the circumference and I think Leeds Corn Exchange is actually more of a circular building than an oval one but I don't know the exact dimensions and I am really using it as more of I guess like a, a kind of loose idea of what I want to do with here rather than it being something that I'm trying to copy block for block so if you can find you know a picture of Leeds Corn Exchange or I can put one up on the screen right now you'll probably get the idea of what I'm going for here but I kind of want to have some archways around the outside I think these are the bits that are going to be made out of stone brick like this and then uh yeah we can we can have them the, the main problem I'm working with right now is the fact that the curvature of the building means that we're going to have to set some of this stuff back a little bit so the archways we end up with start looking like that and as we go further around the building they kind of connect to each other so what we end up with is a series of connected archways we could make them a little taller perhaps but behind each of these, I think maybe to represent the variety of trades we can get inside of here. I'm wondering if maybe we make the backgrounds different for each of the archways. So we work with the curvature of the building a little bit here. We keep the walls kind of in check like that. And then this one here is a nether brick archway. And the next one along might be a prismarine archway. Let's roll this lad in here. He's kind of stuck on the... No, no, don't go that way. <laughs> go back the other way. Let's roll him into this bit here. And then we can fill this up. Just roll a little bit further that way, thank you. We can fill this up with dark prismarine and kind of contrast some of the stuff that it's built out of here and there. Yeah, so maybe we go with different backgrounds for this. Maybe we make the archways a little taller and in the middle we can kind of prop up the next layer of stuff. This is going to be quite a tall building. I'm estimating probably about 15 to 20 blocks tall, give or take. And obviously the roof is going to go, uh, come over on part of that as well. 
And yeah, I think this is going to work out. I do want to make sure that I can space these things evenly around the outside. So I might have to start mirroring this on each of the corners just to make sure I have the symmetry right. Because otherwise, I'm going to come around to the other side and these archways are not going to be in the same place on the opposite side of the building. And it's going to be thoroughly confusing for everybody involved. But the more I look at this, the more I like the contrast between materials here, just kind of spaced out with the stone brick. I hope this makes sense to you guys. I think a lot of this is just building mumbo jumbo to some of you, but I hope this will give you some idea of my thought process going into building this thing. I'm gonna have a lot of fun doing this. I think in some places, just for the symmetry of it here, we are gonna have to take out some of the blocks that are actually part of the wall here, and replace those with the archway blocks, or maybe pull it out one block, but that's gonna offset things from the wall that I've created around the outside of the building. It's weird. Working with irregular shapes like this is kind of difficult. So this is perhaps a little unusual, and I I wonder if I might just strip it down to being dark prismarine and nether brick. I kind of like that combination. Maybe I've just been hanging around this wall of netherrack too much, but I kind of like the nether brick in there. It's a nice contrast with the stone brick, and I don't really, really like having stuff like bone blocks and granite and red brick in there. So maybe we'll just stick to a couple of different materials yeah, I, I think I think that might be better, actually. But I like the way this is coming together. I'm getting a better idea of how I want to decorate it. And around the outside, we can add a few embellishments to these stone columns and stuff as well. We can add stuff like stone brick stairs coming out of here as like supports and that kind of stuff. We can make the building feel a little bit more built into the landscape. We can add leaves around it and stuff like that. And I do want to dress this up a little bit like it's an outbuilding more so than just being a lump of prismarine over here with a zombie in it, right? So I think we're going to spend a little bit of time working on this build. And of course, this being me, we're going to do this in the form of a time lapse.
Welcome back folks, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and right now we're looking at the interior of the build which obviously still has a lot of work left to do with it. I'm actually not going to really have much of the exterior part of the build showing on the inside. It's going to be a very different interior to how it looks on the outside but I just thought we would get the foundations laid today, get the walls built up. Obviously I still have to add a roof and I still want to do a bunch of detail work on the exterior. I have started doing bits and pieces of it in this time lapse. I had a couple of fun ideas for details on the outside here with gold blocks kind of inset into the walls and we have like foliage hanging down from lanterns up there to light it and I really wanted to see what this place looks like at night because I just think the lanterns up there are really going to add a little bit of atmosphere to the build. I've also added a few lanterns in kind of up next to the windows around this side here and around some of the sections of red nether brick and uh, regular nether brick rather and dark prismarine around the outside. I just want to see this place lit up a little bit. However, I am still a little bit wary of letting it get too dark around here because I haven't lit up the interior of this place all that well and even that may not be enough to save some of the villagers because I regret to report a tragic loss amongst the number of villagers that we have gathered around this site already and guys it's a really hard thing to deal with because as I was starting that time lapse as I was starting the live stream where I recorded a bunch of the stuff that happened in the time lapse we were beset upon by a horde of pillagers a patrol spawned really close to the outside of the ring of this building here where the netherrack wall was and while only one of them ended up spawning inside the area of this building that we were working on a few spawned on the outside and they spawned right in front of our friend the cartographer. After I'd even said earlier in that episode how he was one of my new favourite villagers, unfortunately our cartographer was shot by pillager crossbowmen and that really, really stings. It really sucks because I, I could light up this entire area with some sort of torch grid but I don't want to be doing this. I don't really want to have all of my time spent just making sure that pillagers can't spawn out here during the day. And that's the problem. The problem that distinguishes pillagers from zombies is that they will spawn anytime during the day just based on proximity to the player. And while the Minecraft wiki has said in the past, I don't know if it still says this, but it has said in the past that they shouldn't spawn within 200 blocks of a valid village, which to be honest this should be because it has a bunch of villagers, workstations and a bed. They still spawned literally right over there and killed one of my villagers, which makes me a little bit upset about the game. A little bit upset at the game right now. But what I'm not upset about, frankly, is how well we've done with this building on the outside, at least. I'm really quite happy with it. I think it looks really, really great. And I want to add a bunch more detail. Like I said, I want to do some exterior detail work on here. I want to make the walls feel a little bit thicker. I want to have a roof on the thing. I want to have a 3x3 piston door type of thing here, whether it's going to be a piston door that moves blocks around or one that moves sand up and down and or, or concrete powder, which you can now have in 16 colours, so it's actually a, a lot more diverse to use than sand for a kind of gravity-assisted door. I think we're going to have a little bit of fun with that. You might be looking at this thinking, wow, this is kind of a big place to have a, a few villagers in, just a handful of villagers, and that is why... I need to talk to you about how many villagers we're going to have in here because it's going to be a fair number. In that trading hall over there, of course, we had maybe like, I want to say 60, 70 villagers. I think that's how it turned out. And that might seem like a bit of an excessive number. In here, we're going a little bit better. We're going to go for probably around 80 villagers. And you're probably wondering why on earth I need 80 villagers. For a start, there are 37 enchantments in the game, and that doesn't count the different tiers of enchantment you can get. So, for example, efficiency 1 through 5, I'm counting that as a single enchantment. Including the curses, I believe, Curse of Binding and Curse of Vanishing, there are 37 possible enchanted books that we could trade from these guys, and there is no guarantee when we find a librarian and cure him from the zombification process, there is no guarantee that we are going to be getting a you know a top tier book from them like right here i have unbreaking three and impaling five that is great two enchantments top tier from the same villager the other ones though power three lure one not necessarily the best so this guy while he might be doing the work of two villagers we're not going to guarantee to get that every single time 
So in theory, we'll probably need about 30 librarians to cover all of the enchantments that I want to get. And I want all of the enchanted books at my disposal, even the ones that I probably wouldn't use all that much, like the cursed books. The idea here is not to have all of this stuff because I'm going to need it. The idea here is to have all of it because we can have it all. And just to show you guys the wide variety of stuff it is possible to get purely through villager trading. By the same token, we will need a whole bunch of shepherds, we will need a whole bunch of cartographers, we will need a whole bunch of other villagers because many of them will only trade one or two varieties of something that can ha have like 16 colors. So if you think the cartographer had a green banner and a blue banner, cartographers can also trade banners of the other 14 colors in the game. It's just that that guy happened to have both green and blue. And now we need another one of him, but we also need probably eight cartographers to get all of the possible banner color combinations and sometimes those cartographers may even have duplicates of the ones that the others have so we are probably going to be going through a lot of cartographers in order to get all 16 colors represented same goes for shepherds same goes for stonemasons which trade uh terracotta and glazed terracotta i want to have all of those colors available to me as well and in many cases that's actually going to be an advantage because when trades lock up for example if i trade a bunch of pumpkins here with my farmer usually they are quite quick to restore that if they have the workstation in front of them of course which right now i didn't because it was interfering with the villager curing process but if they have workstations in front of them as of 1.14.4 villagers will refresh their trades very very quickly and so we don't need a whole row of farmers in order to trade a bunch of pumpkins all at once however once the next update comes around apparently that is a bug that they have seen fit to fix so as of minecraft 1.15 which we presume is going to be the next update we will receive we're not going to be able to trade a bunch of pumpkins with the same farmer all in one day we're going to get maybe three opportunities to trade first thing in the morning when they refresh their trades and then later on they refresh their trades a second time we're probably only going to get two or three opportunities to do that so it's going to help to have multiple of these villagers even if we don't plan to use say like a farmer who has a wheat and beetroot trade whereas we might use carrots potatoes we are probably going to score the highest amount of emeralds through trading stuff like pumpkins and melons same with the stonemasons i'm planning on trading a lot of bricks and a lot of quartz with them so it's going to be nice to have a huge amount of stonemasons that we can just go down the line and trade with them one by one and get as much of the material as we want or need on top of that, you have the other professions like butchers and fletchers, many of whom will have different trades that they can potentially have for their early tiers. The kind of novice and journeyman tiers will have a few different results. This leather worker, for example, trades me leather pants and so forth, but he doesn't trade me leather boots anywhere in this kind of set of trades that he has generated. So we're going to need one that trades leather boots. Once again, leather stuff is not going to be necessary to me as a player, but I might want to put it on armor stats, and I just like to have the option available to me this guy also has a flint trade we might be able to get flint trades from other villagers but then that might not allow us to get some of the other trades that they have available so we might need three or four armorers three or four weaponsmiths folks like that not to mention that weaponsmiths toolsmiths and armorers will all have enchanted diamond gear which might have different enchantments on it and those trades are not going to be available until the later tiers so those are going to be the ones that we'll have to lock the first set of trades in and just roll the dice and see what we get later on and if we get a bunch of different villagers with a bunch of different armor trades there might be some cool stuff that we can combine so it will help to have a variety of the trades represented in here aside from that i actually want to turn this place into something that looks a little bit like a social space think of it more like a fantasy medieval shopping mall i guess which is sort of what leeds corn exchange is aside from the fantasy medieval part it is very much like a shopping center so it'd be kind of nice to have a fountain in the middle and some balconies and different kind of booths and shops and stuff like that maybe dress up the villager trading element of this so it feels like the villagers are staffing shops instead of just standing here in little booths as long as it is zombie safe and pillager safe and we don't have any more casualties like our unlucky friend the cartographer i'm going to be a lot happier with the experience and i think it's going to really fit in with the style of the world we have here but that is going to be it for this episode of the minecraft survival guide i'm really happy with the progress we've made and i'm sorry we do have to cut it a little bit short here and for those of you who watch this series live as you're watching it as the videos are coming out over the next few days there are going to be a few different videos coming out and they're not going to be coming out as regularly 
over the next week because I am lucky enough to be able to go on holiday and take a few days off. So while there are not going to be daily episodes next week, I will probably try to get a couple of episodes up here and there. Just depends what I can pre-record over the weekend. But I hope you guys will enjoy them. They might be episodes of the Minecraft Survival Guide. They might be something a little bit different. I might throw a couple of other tutorials that don't really fit in with the vanilla Minecraft series in general, but some stuff you might still want to look out for. I particularly want to do a couple of small tutorials on how to use the replay mod, which is the uh, mod that I use to do a lot of the time-lapse segments in these episodes, and I hope you guys will enjoy that. I'll be back in October with a brand new set of Minecraft Survival Guide videos for you, so make sure you stick around for those. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.